I do not know why, but it seems that every single day, colleges just seem to want to really just kill any semblance of due process that they can honestly give in terms of cases of sexual assault that happen on college campuses. Because this is ridiculous. I mean, if a guy is not found, is found not guilty in a court of law and there's no evidence against him, why in the fuck are you not only expelling him... But when you do your own goddamn ex- investigations, you don't do anything similar to what a court would do. All right, it's just a sham of a tribunal, I guess. Because I'm I'm getting tired of this bullshit that a lot of college campuses do. And this is something that Yale did pretty recently. And uh, this was reported yesterday by uh, Ash Shao of the Daily Wire. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, Miss Shao. So, uh, anyway... This guy's name was Saifullah Khan, and he was an immigrant who grew up in an Afghanistan refugee camp and won a scholarship to Yale, <clears throat> and he was accused of being of sexual assault in 2015 by a female classmate. Okay? So, one thing that you would probably notice off the bat, right off the bat, is his immigrant status. He's an immigrant. Oh my god. But oh my god, the... Uh, false sexual assault cases never happen, and they don't, and you know, all this type of stuff, right? Why is it, so? Why is it happening to a guy who's an immigrant? Okay, you're just gonna cut down that narrative. So he was accused in 2015, and it resulted in a criminal trial, which is supposed to, which is it is a rarity. It is somewhat of a rarity. And in the criminal trial, he was found not guilty based on video evidence that showed him and his accuser walking on, arm in arm. This is what the she's writing. As well as key card evidence that supported his story that the woman invited him to her dorm after he left and then asked him to check on her friend who was actually too drunk. Okay, so right then and there, you, that's automatically, like, then case closed. He's not guilty. That's it. All right, just leave it at that. Let him come back to Yale. But no... But no, because even no, because in most of the times where there is a false sexual assault case and it's proven to be a assault, false case, most of the people who are falsely accused, no matter their status in terms of immigration or how crippled they are, because there are cases where people who are crippled have been accused, even though in the circumstances are not physically capable of trying to rape a person. At least in the way that they were describing that one case. And, you know, they don't care. They don't care about your race, your ethnicity, or how crippled you are. They will fucking expel you or suspend you indefinitely. And begrud- and if you be- get begrudgingly accepted back in, you are very lucky. But even then, you'd still have to deal with the, uh, you know, the public hubris of, oh my god, what what if he actually did it? And stuff like that. Even though he was proven not guilty. You're always going to have to deal with that. Right? And it sucks that people have to deal with that. But that's just human nature. But yeah, he was found not guilty. But, you know, activists always want to expel people. And they demanded that Khan get expelled anyway, ignoring the evidence. So, I mean, that's pretty bad. And why would a college do this? All right, I'm, I'm asking... Why would a college do this? It's like they're it's like they're fighting to push a narrative that oh my god, all of the women's are getting sexually abused in colleges, even though that is clearly not the case. Okay, you know what happens in college? People get drunk. People have sex. It's a natural thing. And you know what happens sometimes? People get falsely accused of sexual assault. Okay, and yes, I'm not going to deny that a lot of people get sexually abused on campuses, especially women. But dude, you're gonna, that's ignoring the underlying problem that there's a lot of sexual stuff going on behind closed doors in colleges. And so, he was found not guilty. He still had to go through a campus tri- tribunal. And here's the crazy thing. They tried doing what the Democrats tried to do with Christine Blasey Ford in that whole crappy hearing. Where like they were trying to make sure that she could not... She did not have to show up at all in order to, you know, testify against Kavanaugh 
All right, and here's what they did with this chick. They basically said, well, that basically said, they basically, uh, in this tribunal, uh, they did not let her be there for someone else to cross-examine her, and she did all of her presenting on Skype. And they said it was to not provoke, pr provoke fear in her or something like that, which is ridiculous. In any criminal trial, whether it be murder or sexual assault or anything like that, you need to have not only lawyers present that will push into the accused or the accuser, you have to have the accused and the accuser in the same room together. That's just common sense. Okay? Because if, <laughs> if one of those weren't there in any case, they could spin the story and no one would be able to do anything because they're already out of town. Even though they should be coming there because it's going, you're going to court. You are involved in a court proceeding. Which is ridiculous. It's, it was just it was just stupid. And but but to be fair, Yale is a private university. They can do what they really want to in that aspect, but still, he got cleared by a court of law that should override that. Or at least you think it would. I guess not. And then in early 2018 of October, he was accused of sexual assault by a non-student who previously acted as a public relations consultant. There's an asterisk by it. I'm going to have to look for that later in the description. And for the Yale student, this young male accuser was previously the victim of a false, Ill, uh, uh, false accusation. Yale immediately suspended him after the accusation. And then the student's attorney, his name's Norm Pattis. This is all the stuff coming from the article. Posted on his blog that the D.C. police who investigated the accusation, be because that's where the alleged assault occurred, closed the case without charging Khan. So the, so the D.C. police closed the case like almost immediately because there was no evidence. Right, yeah, and says, Yell, according to Pattis, did not intend to call his accuser in Washington, D.C., concluding that the young man lacked credibility, which is stupid. Okay, there's no evidence at all. Why? And then Khan ended up suing him, which defended its suspension of him. And they were like, they had a legitimate concern that he was, you know, a threat to the people of Yale, which is, which is stupid. And they said this commuter, this, the new accuser had a restraining order, but it's given out. Like, but, you know, restraining orders aren't hard to get. And the accusation was at the time still being investigated by the police. And that was in November. And then all that stuff happened in November. And then on the 2nd of this year, just about a week ago, a week and an extra day, Yale expelled him for the allegation against him from 2015 for which he was not found guilty in the justice system. This is all her words, not mine. Even though he was found not guilty. And this isn't and this didn't have anything to do with the new allegation that came up in October. This was the one from 2015 from which he was not found not only not guilty in a criminal court of law. And in the court of public opinion, it seems that most people are on this dude's side. So it's like. Why even bother suspending him over the second allegation if you're just going to freaking expel him over the first allegation? It just showed that they never cared about facts in the first place. They just wanted to present a narrative. They wanted to present that rape culture narrative, it seems. Okay, how anyone could see this case and think that Yale was in the right here is completely ridiculous. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. So how is he, f and then uh, here, and then here's a, here's a good one. So how was Khan found responsible for sexual assault by the school when a court found him not guilty? And then Pattis lays it out on his blog in the case, writing, Mr. Khan was afforded due process as criminal trial, but derived a meaningful right to defend himself at the university's tr tribunal. And he was not allowed to, he was actually, Pattis, Khan didn't even have his lawyer present. All right, he said this, Pattis wasn't allowed to participate in the tribunal. He could only sit silently like a potted plant. Like, he couldn't do anything. And the accuser wasn't even required to 
attend the hearing as she had to in court. And like I said, she had to provide testimony with Skype. And Khan was in the separate room at the time, so he couldn't dispute anything. So it's not to traumatize her. And they had to listen to the audio of her call. That's bad. And he, they couldn't cross-examine her either. So, so that means... And I'm going to paraphrase what she's saying here. That means... If she said something that's completely contradicting of previous evidence or outright false, and they know it, they can't call them out on it. Which is what you do in a court. Which is what you do in a tribunal. So that's just like, what? And they, and like, they couldn't show the video of them flirting and hold, holding, holding arm in arm and the key card stuff. And the, she even sent him a Shakespearean sonnet. So it's like, what the hell? And he couldn't even record the hearings either, which I, which is something I would have done regardless. I would have brought like a fucking, uh, not like a camcorder, but I would have brought my phone and cut the recorder on. So that way I would get everything on it or at least find like a good tape recorder. So that poor dude. But he said, no lawyer, this is coming from the lawyer now, no lawyer, no cross-examination, no right to confront the accuser, no right to even make sure his accuser returned to make her case in person, no right to make a record of the proceedings, yells fact finders behaved, as throw, though the pursuit of justice were the prerogative of a secret society. Yeah, that's basically it. They didn't care. They thought they were doing the right thing by basically doing... Everything you should not be doing in this situation. Okay, and to all you people out there, and I'm not saying that you, my general audience, like, I'm talking about the people who fucking push this stupid ass narrative that false sexual assault allegations only happen rarely. Look at college campuses, please. Just look at college campuses and come back to me on that. Please. Look at how the numerous allegations that have been proven false over the last five or so years, and then with the more high-profile cases back in 06 or back in the 2000s at least with the Duke lacrosse team, and get back to me on that. And it's just... It's stupid. And Khan... Uh, Wants to press charges, or at least he wants to take him. He wants to sue, or get, he wants to get a lawsuit against him, basically. And he said, "I'm not phased. I still have high hopes for what America stands for, and tremendous trust in our constitutional republic." Which is a good thing to say. Which means he's not only an, an immigrant who did everything like an immigrant should. He's an upstanding citizen. He believes in the Constitution of the United States. He believes in the United States as a whole. He believes in the constitutional re constitutional republic, right? And yet, Yale's dragging this good man's name to the mud for seemingly no reason. And it's just sad. It's just sad. All right, college is supposed to be a case of uh, supposed to be a place of higher learning. That's what it's supposed to be. It's just supposed to be a place of higher learning. And yet. And, and yet, you can't even be expected to have a good time because at any moment, if you get maybe even a little flirtatious with someone, you can be falsely accused of sexual assault and then lose your scholarships or you can get kicked out or you might not actually be able to even attend college again. You may actually end up going to jail despite there being no evidence, depending on what happens. I doubt that's actually happened yet, but it could. This is just ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's just, yeah, and uh, and there was a, there's some other stuff in the article. Well, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. But Jesus Christ, what in the living world of fuck are we living in? Like, wh where are we right now in terms of how bad the timeline has been fucked up? Like, in any, I, I can't imagine, like, there's no way in hell living in the 2000s 
or like in the 1990s or 1980s, that this shit would have been fucking accepted, that this shit would have been fucking defended, that this shit would be happening on a regular basis because it would be, it would be quashed on the spot. Why is it happening right now? Why is it happening not only so much and so frequently, but why are the higher ups at these colleges allowing this to happen? What is the point? Okay? Look, you want to bring more attention to people who get sexually abused? Sure, go right ahead. Okay? But don't fucking drag out false testimony against a guy and then after he is declared innocent in a fucking court of law, expel him four years later. It's just, oh, God, it just makes my head want to explode. Okay, I wasn't even planning to make this video. I didn't even know about it until this morning. Like, I'm recording at 1.40 in the morning. Well, not 1.40, 11.40 in the morning. Yeah, I wasn't even planning to make this video. But, oh, my God, this is just terrible. All right, this is just indicative of the fact that there are so many cases like this that have happened in the past. Granted, not all of them have the same media attention, like Mattress Girl. And I'm not even sure the entirety of the stuff happening with other things. I didn't hear this one reported in mainstream news, like other court cases where there is a clear false testimony, and yet they're being allowed to walk not only scot free, that then the uh, guy that she accused ends up getting vilified by nearly half the country immediately. Despite the fact that there is such a thing as due process. And once again, this is going to hurt real sexual assault victims. If, pe if, like, if colleges, not only colleges, but if just people in general keep dredging up false sexual assault allegations and keep pushing it forward so much in order to push their own political agendas, they keep doing that too much. They're already doing it too much anyway. But if they do that even more... More and more actual victims are going to be ignored. The thing that most people, the thing that feminists say happens on a daily basis that, oh, all the rape victims be ignored. No, they are not. Most of them are taken pretty seriously. You know what happens when a person is accused of rape? Immediately vilified. Unless there is evidence they are to the contrary. Okay. Like if, and I'm pretty sure most men would tell you, if somebody, if they found somebody raping their sister or raping their mother, they would kill the motherfucker. As would I. So don't pull that bullshit on me. Don't pull that bullshit on anyone. Okay? If you want to make everything better for women and the justice system, actually do something about sexual assault actually try to make better safeguards for kids in college. Actually try to make things a little bit more stringent when it comes to sex. Please. Or do something. Just do so anything besides ruining people's lives. Okay? If they actually committed sexual assault, yes, they deserve to go to jail. They deserve to get expelled. But if they didn't, it's verifiable that they didn't. Why are you going after him as if they did? Especially when there's no evidence that says that they did. Like, just use your goddamn heads for two damn seconds, people. Ugh. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that little rant. I just made it out of the blue. I could have yelled a bunch more, but... Nah, too tired. Didn't really sleep that much last night. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't die.